manual muzzle tested mistakes. First one, practitioner state is should be normal tonic. When the, pa the practitioner tests the patient, usually he's testing the patient and himself. Then, if I am normal, to I am the patient is normal tonic. I am not. Probably, I'm going to test hypertonic the patient because I transmit the hypertonicity very often. Number two, intentional testing is the most common mistake. When the patient wants to confirm his guesses, it's because they want to confirm that they are right, not that they don't want to get information. If they are going to test, they push harder or they make a mistake or whatever to use to confirm they are right. This is the most common mistake. Third one is the positional compensation. Sometimes we need to test muscles like a serous anterior and the test is weak. But many times the, the, the scapula doesn't fail. Could be the shoulder, could be the elbow but not the, not, the, not the scapula from the cerebral anterior. Then I'm going to test a patient. I need to see how they compensate or what model is failing during the test. Other option could be testing the shoulder, but the strap is unstable and is going to be weak. Not because we have a problem in the shoulder, it's because if we have a problem in the thorax. The next one is with the, pa is with the patient avoid the test position. If I test the shoulder, and at that moment he start to rotate, move, move back, whatever, he avoid the, po the proper position of position of the test is because usually they are weak or the core of the muscles are weak. Number four, push and release. If I go to test the muscle and I push, release, and push again, I'm going to inhibit the reflex. Myotactic reflex is going to be inhibited if I push, release, and push again, the patient will test weak when it should be strong. Other common mistake is when we steam after UTL. If we want to do it properly, we need to ask the patient to UTL or local TL, do the steam, whatever, and test. If I ask the patient to UTL after I steam, will not work if I use indicator muscle. Other common mistake is to push so hard or so fast. So hard is very, is very common when the pain is hypertonic. If the pain is hypertonic, for example, the neck is hypertonic, you do something and test again. But very often the patient push so, so hard because they try to beat the strong muscles, the hypertonic muscle. This is very common in hypertonicity. Other option is to push so fast. You put there and merely a test before the patient is able to resist or to hold the position. Next one should be eyes, jaw, or talus because they compensate the weakness. You may have a patient and the patient has a weak deltoid. Be careful that the patient is not moving his eyes to the opposite side or other side because they may facilitate the weak muscle. When we test, don't see only the, the muscle we are testing. 
you need to see the position, we need to see the talus, we need to see the jaw and eyes to be sure it's not compensated by them. Or the option could be holding the breath. Patient, very often, when they are weak, they need to breathe in to become stronger, to breathe out their weak. Could be a cranial fold, or could be a dysfunction of the diaphragm. It's important to be sure they, they don't need to breathe in or out for the test. And we need to be sure that they are going to use uh, respiratory muscles on the proper inspiration or expiration. Example, okay, I'm going to test the abdominal muscles, I need to test them in expiration, never in inspiration, because if not, we are going to create a problem or dysfunction in the brain. Avoid the TL on pulse points and don't test capsule or other joint or the ligaments. The most common is the pulse points. Very often the practitioner grab the wrist and TL the pulse points. Sometimes the pain may test weak just because we are TL in the pulse points. Or we are going to touch and we straight the capsule we are going to stretch all the area with a lot of the that have maybe have these functions. Wrong vector. The vector is important because if I want to test, for example, the vector is major, I need to test all side a little lower if I want to test the vector is major clavicular. If I test in the, in, the, in the different vector, for example, I push that way and back, or I push outside and too much lower, probably I'm going to test a different muscle, not a pectoral major clavicula. Other option, don't stretch the joints. Very often, we may have a problem with the joints. If I test here for serious anterior, the arm in this position, thumb in this position, and test weak, now try to test pushing down in the, in the arm. If this is strong and this is weak, probably we have a problem in the elbow and not in the shoulder. Do not stretch the skin. It's very common, especially in the neck. I put the patient in position and I'm going to push in this direction. But if I push up and stretch the skin, probably I'm going to inhibit the neck. Can be a normal response. Same with the hands. If I have a hand and I'm going to push the skin in any direction, I'm going to facilitate some muscles and I'm going to inhibit some muscles. Example, if I'm going to want to facilitate the, the biceps, I need to stretch the skin in this direction, from proximal to this side of the palm. This is going to facilitate, it, facilitate it, the biceps. If I push in the opposite way, normally it's going to inhibit the biceps. Same is the opposite with the triceps. A stabilization of the patient. Okay. This is uh, can be a mistake when you stabilize or when you do not stabilize. Example, deltoid. You tell the patient, this is strong because I stabilize the other shoulder. Can be a mistake if I do not test again without the stabilization because now can be weak because he has a big abdominal muscle. Or if I test without stabilization, it is weak. Now I need to test with stabilization to see if it becomes strong. To be sure that problems come from the shoulder or the problems come from the abdominal muscles. Same with any joint.
a stabilization of the practitioner, a stabilization of the patient. Sometimes the patient is unstable. The patient is unstable because he is not in a proper position. If I test him in this position with the legs very close, probably it's going to be unstable and test weak. I need to test in this position and now I need to test holding the other leg, holding the hip, to be sure the weak muscle is the abdominal muscle and it's not the editor's gluteus medius or another muscle. Be sure when you stabilize the patient or when the patient is stable itself. Okay, this is the same, this is stable and this is unstable. You test the patient and test it strong, do not stabilize to see if something changed. If you don't stabilize, now the patient may test weak and you need to be sure it's because it's unstable or because he has not a, a strong core muscles. Never should. Be sure that the doctor or the patient is not chewing doing the test. Because if the patient chew, it's going to change the response. Doesn't matter if they have a, a, a jaw problem or not. If the patient chew, for example, oh, strong, chew, as soon as he starts to chew, probably going to be weak, and then it's strong, then weak, then it's strong. Be careful, this can change a lot your testing. Look for the compensation work while testing. This is a really important rule. If they have a patient, I need to test the muscle, but be sure that I'm not looking only in the muscle I am testing, and to see everything, because could be weak in the clear, but the patient stabilize or facilitate the muscle using other areas of the brain, like eyes, jaw, lips, or ankles. They are the most common. If I test and the patient has to move the ankle, move the jaw or look to the other area or breathe in or out is because they we can declare but he needs to facilitate two response to 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 be to test strong during the test. This is a, this is a normal normal plasticity of the brain but we need to be sure if the muscle is weak in the clear or not. Why response to the move can change if it looks to another place. Because cerebellum is, can change the response of the brain, can change the response of the muscle, moving the virtual dysfunctions. Eyes and jaw and higher move the, the virtue to another place and change the associated muscles. Sometimes we need to test the patient in sitting position and in different other positions like a standing, lying down, or prone or supine. Because if the patient is weak in this position, become strong standing, we may know that the problem may come from the legs, from the feet, from the pelvis, just by changing the position. If he is weak in sitting, the study is strong, it's not the feet, probably going to be the pelvis. If the patient is strong in sitting position, but the study becomes weak, be careful, could be the feet or walking could be the gate again problem. Uh, sometimes the patient can respond to other steam, no our proper steam. If the patient has a brain nuclei or dysfunction of the receptor in the eyes, maybe the light can inhibit him. Or the sounds of sight, or could be uh, uh, touching. I want to test here, I touch here, but he has a, a touch, crude touch, dysfunction here. Now he may respond different way 
because this I am testing uh, uh, or I have I, I get the the dysfunctional response of a crew touch, for example. Then in the pain test weak and you think that maybe this is or this is strange or have a strange response or weird response, then you need to turn off the lights or be careful uh, be sure that there is no noise outside or test the different areas of the patient or test the specific areas of the skin to be sure this is not uh, the cause or the source of the weakness in the patient. Those are the most common mistakes. We need to be sure we are doing a proper muscle testing because this is the source of the information for our diagnosis and treatment. Thank you very much.